Hey guys. Happy homebrew Wednesday. How you doing? Let's see if I can pull this off in one take because I'm tired and I don't want to mess around. So, um, yeah, I actually apologize. This is a little late today. I uh, <laughs> I fell asleep last night pretty early. I uh, didn't get a chance to do homebrew Wednesday video. I uh, kind of crashed. So today I got up and um, I had to go out and I had to keg my beers. I had to cook a roast beef for dinner. I had roast beef for dinner. Oh, my tummy is happy. <laughs> Uh, and I had to wait for my beer to get cold and stuff, and oh, it's, yeah. So we're a little late today, but we're here. That's the main thing. So, um, what do we got today? Well, I, again, I'm doing it simple on my iPad because it's a lot quicker to do it this way. I can render it up to get it up on YouTube a lot faster and it's easier. So, um, I, uh, replaced my Corona glass, which I broke, mm, probably about a year and a half ago, and I was at Value Village today, and I found another one. I found two, actually, but I, I just bought one. love my little Corona glass. It's a great little glass, just for, you know, pouring a little bit of beer out. <clears throat> That's a Cooper's English Bitter, one of my favorite uh, Cooper's kits. I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I got, I got, uh, some some an old grain uh, recipe I gotta do, and I got another partial, and I got two other partials actually. And I just I don't have time. I just you know I don't have time. So thank God for the the ability to to keep the pipeline filled with some some decent beer with using kits. So there's this thing going around um, Homebrew Wednesday. People are responding to S J Poor's thing about why do you make your own beer, and I've sort of already. Uh, done mine. Um, I think that's he was mentioning in the video that he did. That's where he sort of got the idea from. So I'm not going to do it again. Uh, you guys know why I, I make my beer. And uh, the, the funny thing is, is originally, like the original reason I started making beer, is different than the reason now that I make beer. Although I still do it to save money, um, there are other reasons why I like to make it. Um, it's not just about saving money anymore. It's been uh, a great journey, and you can make some great beers. Um, I can't wait for my next all grain batch. I have a partial extract, Kilkenny beer. I got some beer ma mail coming to me, by the way, and I, a guy from uh, amongst other people who are sending me some beers to try, and we'll get to those when they arrive. Uh, one from the UK, one from northern, you know, a little bit north from me in Ontario. And uh, some other ones. And one from uh, Ireland. It's actually a, a Kilkenny, an actual Kilkenny beer that he's going to send me. And he wants to be, me, be, me to be able to do sort of a side-by-side -side, um, between the actual one and the one I make. And I'll, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I'll tell you what, if there's a difference. I'm sure there will be. Um, I'm not, I didn't make up the recipe for, for the, the one I'm going to make. It's, you know, from the homebrew shop, so... We'll see how close they are to, to the thing. And so we'll do that. And, um, yeah, the reason why I started brewing was to save money, but now I love making my own beer. I prefer it to store-bought. And, you know, everybody... Uh, this is, here comes a rant. Here comes a rant. <laughs> everybody has their own reasons for doing stuff. they got their own reasons for making it. they got their own reasons for drinking it. Some people drink beer just to get, you know, get, catch a buzz, like, you know, get a little bit drunk, like, they, they walk out of the store with the cheapest beer they can find, and they drink that stuff up, it's made, made of mostly rice and, and other things, it's only like 50% barley, the rest of it's, you know, stuff, other things, but they drink that, and they enjoy it, and I do the same thing sometimes, I'll go out and I'll buy some some red stripe or some other, you know, and I'll just, you know, Budweiser, and I'll just drink it, I'll just enjoy that sort of clean, filtered, sort of non-obtrusive taste, you know, catch a little buzz off that. But other people, and including myself, we also like to drink craft beers that taste good, that are yummy, you know, uh, and uh, it's, you know, it's kind of like food too, you know, you like, you know, sometimes you just want to get your belly filled, other times you want that, you know, wonderful thing like what I had tonight, which is roast beef uh, dinner, so... Um, 
everyone's got their own reason and nobody should ever look down on anybody for doing it any different way. And uh, Bobby from New Jersey, who I love and admire, he's a great dude and he's smart as hell when it comes to brewing and his videos are very good quality as well. Um, he said something in one of my comments a couple of years ago. Um, he said that this homebrew snobbery, this beer snobbery bullshit is so high school and I can't agree with them more. I couldn't agree with them more. It is. I mean, I've, I've poked into the forums a couple times in the last couple weeks, and I see people downplaying the beer kits and downplaying, you know, and then, unless they're, you're doing it their way, it's, it's, it's no good. And yeah. I'll don't go for that myself. You do it the way you want to do it, and that's the choice you've got. You enjoy the fruits of your labor. You make your own. However you do it. That's what we keep trying to get the message across to everybody. Don't be ashamed. And I think a lot of, I think some guys, especially in some of the forums that you can go on, I think they're in such a hurry to get to all grain because it's what everyone else is doing. And they want that notoriety. I, I do think that. I've heard other people say that as well. Anyway, that's sort of my little rant there. Um, I think as long as we're making it. And you know, the thing is, is that you know, this is what we're trying to do, guys, aren't we? Us as home brewers, us as brew tubers, um, us as, you know, brew casters, whoever you are, whatever you do, if you're making your own beer, doing your videos and whatnot, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get more people into brewing. We're trying to indoctrinate as many people as we can into the home brewing hobby. And I think that's um, where, you know, the kits, the beer kits, the simple beer kits, really shine because I personally and this is my own personal opinion okay it's my own personal opinion I think it's ridiculous to expect a new a brand new out of the bag home brewer to do all grain right off the top I just don't think that's proper I or no I shouldn't say proper I don't think it's feasible um some people have done that though They've gone out and bought all the stuff, and they've done all grain. First thing, boom. First batch of beer, all grain. But not everybody can do that. Not everybody wants to do it. I know myself, I wouldn't have wanted to if I thought I had to. You know, it's something that comes along after you get some experience, and there's so much margin for error when you're doing all grain that you really should get your, you know, your basics down first. That's my own opinion, though. And that doesn't... It's not a, that's not a fact. It's just an opinion. So... That's why I do the kits, and I'll be doing some more beer kit videos in the near future. Um, just so that, you know, to remind people that, you know what, this is easy. It's not a mystical, you know, uh, making beer is not magic. Although it does seem like that sometimes. When you drink your final product, it's like, wow. But it's, it's not magic. It just works, you know, if you make a mistake. And, you know, some of the questions I get from people, valid questions, some stuff like, um, well, I, I wanted to check my, my brews three days in, you know, and I wanted to check it, so I lifted the lid and looked in, but now I'm afraid I've, I've ruined it because I took the lid off, um, and so what do I do, what have I done, you know, and I, I get questions like that all the time, and I, you know, I'm typing back going, no, don't, bud, don't worry, it's fine, you're, you're, you're good, just, you know, it's all good, you know. I get questions about airlocks and about all kinds of stuff. Oh, I forgot to do this, or I stirred my yeast instead of sprinkling it, you know. What, have I screwed up my batch? These people are, like myself, kind of worriers, you know. Worriers, not warriors. Uh, or, well, maybe warriors, you know. They are afraid they're going to screw it up, you know, just by doing some little thing. I can't even imagine the horrifying experience they would have if they were trying to do an all-grain batch for the first time, <laughs> their first brew. They'd be like, it, it wouldn't be fun. So it's good that we've got uh, other ways of doing it, simpler ways. And as John Palmer says, our extracts these days are so fresh and such good quality that you can make excellent beer with them. So there we have it. We've been over this a thousand times. Let me show you some records I bought today. Um, I have a very wide diverse, 
di what's the word? Um, diverse um, field, window of music that I listen to. Some records I buy just because I used to have them and they got ruined, um, so I bought them again. Some records I'm going to play on my cast on Friday night. Let's take a look. I'm going to sleep tonight. Okay, let's get them out here. Let's see. Oh, not everyone's going to agree with all this, but, you know, everyone's got their own thing. So, I got these for $2 a piece, and they're in, they're in fantastic condition. Got some George Benson here. Not a scratch on it, not a pop on it. Sort of funk, funky kind of stuff. Good stuff there. Got some Billy Joel. 52nd Street, it's in excellent condition. It plays like a gem. Madonna. I had to, because you never see this in the thrift stores. Um, and it, it's in immaculate condition, pardon the pun. She has an album called Immaculate. Linda Ronstadt, and it's with the Nielsen Riddle Orchestra. Is that my reading that right? It's very hard to read because it's like blue on purple. I listened to some of this today, and I was... I was absolutely floored. Uh, it's not her typical, uh, you know, style of music. It's, it, it's she's singing along with an orchestra. It's very bluesy. It's very uh, classical, and and the record plays like you can't hear it. You don't even know it's a record. It's so it's such good quality. I was st stunned. Yeah, um, uh, rough trade. Never mind. Don't don't even don't ask. Pat Benatar. Rockin' little chip there. This is a Madonna EP that I bought. It's got Cherish, I think, on it. Or, not Cherish, but Into the, into the Groove. It's a 45 RPM... Uh, 78, or sorry, uh, LP. Or, whatever, 12 inch. That's the best of uh, Olivia Newton-John, Volume 2. Some of her 80s stuff. I keep trying to buy Super Tramp Breakfast in America. This one didn't come with a cover. And I keep hoping that they're going to be good. They're always true, chewed up, scratched, screwed. It's because people played these records a lot. These Super Tramp Breakfast in America records. You're not going to find one that's in good condition. Unless you go on eBay or something like that. Oh, this I bought this for my son, David. He loves the bagpipes. Don't tell him I told you. <laughs> it's, it's in immaculate condition. Uh, it's his first vinyl, and he was pleased as punch. Got some uh, Leo Sayer. Got some The Monks, you know, Drugs in My Pocket, that song, you know, that stuff here. Got some Lionel Richie, always liked Lionel, and the, the uh, Commodores. Good stuff. Almost finished. Got some Bonnie Tyler. Love her voice, even when it was rough. A little bit of more, bit more Billy Joel there, Glass Houses. He always looks so tired. Why is that? Looks like he just woke up, but anyway. And uh, Lover Boy, because I already have this record, but it was damaged, so I bought another one. And this Kenny Rogers record was uh, still in the shrink wrap, so I had to buy it. <laughs> I don't know what's on it. Oh, it's got the Islands in the Stream with Dolly Parton, written by Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees. So I think that's probably what caught my eye. That's why I bought it. And it's in, there's no inner sleeve, but it's actually in great condition. So that's what I bought. I'll be playing some of those on my Friday night broadcast on justin.tv slash craigtube. I hope you can join me there and have some fun. <sighs> Going to have a couple more of these. Um, and listen to some couple of my, my uh, albums there. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And I hope to see you Friday. Um, hopefully next week I'll have something different for you on here. And um, just go by the seat of our pants and do what we can with what we've got. All right, guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next week. We'll see you soon on another video. And we'll see you on Friday night on my live cast. Take care and be safe.